Now for these questions, we need to multiply or multiply by a multiple of 10, so a number that ends in a zero. First, we have three times 80. Now that's 240, because if we know that three times eight is 24, we know that three times 80 is 240, so that's 24 with a zero on the end. If we have an end zero in a multiplication question, there will be an end zero in our answer as well. Now, 40 times eight. Well, we know that four times eight is 32, and that means 40 times eight must be 320. So 32 with a zero on the end, because we have a zero in our multiplication question. If we know four times eight is 32, we know 40 times eight is 320. And finally, we have nine times 20. If we ignore the zero for a moment, we know that nine times two is 18. So we can write 18, but then put a zero on the end, because if we have an end zero in a multiplication question, there will be an end zero in our answer as well. Now on a number line, for three times 80, we can show three jumps of 80. So we have 80, 160, 240. So if we keep on adding 80 each time, we get 80. Then if we add another 80, we get 160. So that's two times 80. But then if we add another 80, we get 240. Because three times 80 is 240. And you can see that counting in steps of 80 is just like counting in steps of eight but with a zero as our ones digit. Then we had 40 times eight. Now we could show 40 jumps of eight on our number line, but that would take us a very long time. So instead, let's show eight jumps of 40, because remember with multiplication, order doesn't matter. So if we count in steps of 40, we get 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280, 320. So counting in steps of 40 is just like counting in steps of four, but with a zero as our ones digit. Because if we're counting in steps of 40, we're counting in steps of four tens. And finally, we had nine times 20. So if we count in steps of 20, we get 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. So because we've added 20 each time and we've made nine jumps, we know that nine times 20 is 180. And again, we can see counting in steps of 20 or counting in steps of two tens is just like counting in steps of two, but then with a zero on the end. Now, if we look at these questions a bit more closely, first we had three times 80. So we can show three jumps of 80. We have 80, so instead of eight ones, because 80 is eight tens, we can show eight tens below what we jump each time. Then the next multiple of 80 is 160, but because we wanted three times 80, we needed to make a third jump, and that gave us 24 tens altogether. But if we have 24 tens, we have 240. So with a zero, as our ones digit. So remember, counting in steps of 80 is just like counting in steps of eight, but then with a zero as our ones digit. Because with 80, 
we're adding eight tens each time. Then we had 40 times eight, which is the same as eight times 40. So counting in steps of 40, we have 40, so we can show four tens below what we count each time. Then if we add another four tens, we have eight tens, so that's 80. Then 120, 160, 200, 240, 280, and then 320. So we made eight jumps of 40, and that's taken us to 320, because we have 32 tens. And if we have 32 tens, we could regroup those into three hundreds and two tens. So counting in steps of 40 is just like counting in steps of four. Then for our last question, we had nine times 20. So we can make nine jumps of 20. We have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, and then our ninth jump takes us to 180. So 9 times 20 is 180, because we know that if we had 1s instead of 10s here, 9 times 2 is 18. So if we have an end zero in our multiplication question, we can ignore it, do the multiplication, and then put an end zero on the end of our answer.